Hello everyone and welcome back for another information literacy video. Today we're going to tackle research questions. Research questions fit into the first step of our research process. The research process we're going to explore over the course of this entire semester. The first step being to find the information need and you can see the rest there. One thing I want to point out right up front, remember back to our discussion on information and DIKW data, information, knowledge, and wisdom from last week. We're going to apply that everywhere. Anytime you see information, data, knowledge, or wisdom individually, I want you to thank all of these as a collective group because it really depends on that initial need that you have. If your boss asks you to dig into the spreadsheets from last quarter, that's raw data he wants you to dig into, but at some point you're probably going to want to transform that into information and knowledge and some wisdom for, to make your business perform better next quarter. So you're going to be moving up and down this pyramid. You're not staying at the information level the entire time. Why have a process? Why do this? Two, keep yourself from aimlessly wandering around searching for stuff that doesn't accomplish your end goal. Whether that end goal is to solve a problem, to answer a question, or to perform a task, always remember that technology is about efficiency. We have a process in order to make ourselves uh, more efficient in the way we go about uh, doing research, but also make sure that we use the technology to help ourselves be more efficient performing this task. Up first, the main research question. We're going to break research questions down into two, the main and the focused research questions. We need to define our main research question first. Main research questions include key terms. They're the first question you're going to think to ask when you're performing any kind of research, whether that's a simple Google search or a five-page uh, research paper. They're not too broad or not too narrow. Now, I know that sounds like trying to find the best porridge, uh, but what I mean is that they fit your need. You're going to have a fundamentally different question to write that 100-page PhD thesis than you are for the five-page undergraduate research paper. So it has to be uh, it has to fit depending on the need that you have. It's not too broad and it's not too narrow. The appropriate audience. We're going to hit this one later. Again, with that PhD research, you've got a different level of audience than you do for uh, that presentation you did in high school. Verifiable. This can be tough. Our main research question has to be uh, verifiable with fact. We have to be able to actually answer it with facts. And it avoids being subjective. Uh, our, your opinion, your bias can creep into your research questions, and you've got to cut that out. What you can have is, is a judgment. But what happens is that judgment is different from your opinion. Your judgment is backed up. It's verifiable. It's backed up by DIKW. And what happens is you usually end up with a judgment after you've answered your main research question. So it's very important to avoid being subjective when you write your questions, otherwise you might uh, negatively impact the research that you do moving forward. So I've got some main research questions for you. I want to fix them. How does technology affect healthcare? First off, that's way too broad. Technology is huge, healthcare is huge. How can we make it a little more narrow? How do fitness trackers affect obesity? So we picked a singular technology and a singular aspect of healthcare. But my question back to you is, did we go too far? Did we make it too narrow? If this is my 100-page PhD dissertation, can I write 100 pages on this question? Maybe not. Maybe I've gone too far. But if I'm trying to write a five-page paper or simply ask a question uh, into the Google search box, that could be perfect. Does Apple's enterprise resource planning system maximize efficiency in the overseas transport of products in its supply chain? Um, what? What did you just say? Wrong level for my audience. That's up here. That's some you know C-suite business exec asking that question. That's not for us. Secondly, is this going to be verifiable? This is probably part of some secret sauce that Apple uses to make tons of money. You're not going to just find this on the top Google result. A better question might be, how do computer companies, Apple being one, take products from idea to sale? 
that's something that we could find maybe not a specific example all the way through from Apple but based on the entire industry we could verify these are the products that it takes to get a new computer from idea into the hands of a consumer last one why are smartphones harmful now again this might be too broad but what I really want to focus in on is that this is subjective. We've already assumed negative intent just by phrasing it in this way. Why are they harmful? Why not? Why are they helpful? But you know what? Why are they helpful is also a bad question because we've assumed positive intent. So we need to write it something like this. How do smartphones affect cancer rates? Not how do they affect them positively or negatively, but just how. Let's let the data, information, knowledge, and wisdom we find when we do our research answer the question, not let our personal bias or opinion creep into the original question we asked. One thing I want to point out here is notice that these are all open-ended questions. It's not, do smartphones affect cancer rates? That's a closed question. That's a yes or no question. You're definitely not writing your 100-page paper on a yes or no question. But how do they affect? Now that's open-ended. Now we can, uh, we can go a lot of different ways with a question like that. So we talked about main research questions, and now we need to talk about focused research questions. Focused research questions break down that main question, who, what, where, why, when, and how. Right? So what they allow you to do uh, are to, to really make a plan for how you're going to go about your research. We're going to talk about the research process, and that in itself is a plan. But the questions we start to ask uh, to dig into the meat of our main research question allow us to plan how we're going to go about doing that research. Uh, if it's actually to write a research paper or some kind of formal report, it allows you to start making a plan. Well, how am I going to divide this end product up? How am I going to divide this research paper up into different sections? They allow you to organize your thoughts, again, depending on what your final outcome is. Uh, maybe it's a presentation you've got to give to the board. You're going to start being able to organize your thoughts, organize your presentation by asking these different re focused research questions. And finally, they allow you to start backing up your ideas with DIKW. Start turning some opinions you might have about that original main research question into judgment because you found some data to back up what it is you're looking for. I've, I want to go back to one of our main research questions. How do computer companies take products from idea to sale? How do they get it in my hands? That's a main research question. Some examples of possible focus questions could be what are the steps involved? Is it just idea, sale? No, there's a lot of things that happened in between. So what are those steps? Where do these steps happen? Right now, Apple's on a big kick, designed in California. So if it's designed, if the idea comes from someone in California, uh, do the parts come from there? Are they made there? Does a computer get put together there? Is it shipped out of there? No, these things happen all over the country, all over the world, depending on the scale of your organization. How is this efficient? Remember I said technology is always about being efficient. So how is, uh, how is the process that computer companies are using to take products from ideas to sale efficient? Now I want you to know that it's okay to not have all of your research questions crafted uh, before moving on to doing some initial research. It's okay not to have them, but you must strike a balance and know when to quit asking new questions in order to meet your needs efficiently. That question, how is this efficient? Uh, that's quite a rabbit hole we could go down. Each of those steps could be efficient and inefficient in and of itself. And in fact, each of the steps in this process have entire books written about them. So we can go quite, uh, quite a ways down here. We need to know when to, to cut ourselves off. If you've got a three-week deadline and you need to have this done immediately, there might be some interesting questions that you come up with along the way, but are they relevant to meeting my end need? Uh, if they are, then we need to tackle them. We need to figure out a way to fit them into this short timeline. If not, maybe they're just something you look up after the fact to satisfy some curiosity. That's our video on main and focused research questions. I hope you got a lot out of this. Thanks for watching.